Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Nick here with you, and we've got a first for the channel today, and that's the demo, review, installation and uninstallation procedure for a new freeware add-on from our friends over at FlightSim.2. If you haven't heard of FlightSim.2, I encourage you to check it out. It's a great place for thousands of freeware and payware add-ons for FS2020. Today's demo in review is of MSFS 2020 Google Map Replacement Mod. And this mod does exactly what you might think. It takes your aerial ground textures from Bing Map and replaces those with ones taken by Google Maps. And now this is just your aerial photography. It's not any buildings. We're not pulling in Google Earth buildings. The only thing you'll be pulling in is just that aerial imagery available from Google Map. Let's go ahead and get into some side-by-side -side comparison shots, and I'll let you enjoy those before we jump into the installation and uninstallation procedure for the mod. On to the install, we'll launch our favorite internet browser and navigate to FlightSim.2. Once you're at FlightSim.2, look for the MSFS 2020 Google Map replacement. Right now, it's top of the trending right now charts. Open up the page for the mod and make sure you read the notes on the mod. There is a disclaimer as well as some notes on new versions and the fact that this mod will update frequently. There's a couple other videos out there showing how to do the Python install, but with this new Windows native UI version, it's much simpler and easier as you'll find out here in just a moment. Pay no attention to the information below for version prior to three. Just scroll down at the bottom and go ahead and download version three. You may need to sign up for a Flight Sim 2 account. I highly recommend that you do. It'll keep track of all of your add-ons. Once you click this download button, you're not going to choose the Python version. You want the main file. Get the main file, version 300 there. Grab that file and have it download. The download will start. Once it does, you'll look in your downloads folder and you'll see that you have a zip file there. Now I have WinRAR installed, so you'll see that little icon for WinRAR next to the zip file, but you can just use the Windows native extractor if you like and extract those files into your downloads folder or wherever you like them. It is an installer, so it'll tell you to choose a location later on. We're just going to go ahead and extract them to the downloads folder here. And once that's done, we'll see that folder there. We'll open it up. And inside of it, we'll have the install file for the MSFS 2020 map enhancement. You'll double click the setup file and it'll ask you to choose a destination folder. Now here's where I have all of my 2020 add-ons in a particular location on my C drive. So I'm gonna choose that location. You can put it wherever you like. The default is program files, but I'm gonna put mine under MSFS files and then MSFS tools. And the reason I do that is because I've got a pseudo community file that I use with the add-on linker. Another great tool. And when you finish the setup, you have the option to run it or not. We're going to go ahead and run it. And when we do, it'll pop up. Do a quick overview of the menu bar. 
So you got file, edit, view, window, and help. Under file and edit, it's just the normal stuff. Under view, you have a reload and force reload. Don't confuse those with the simulator. It's only for this application. Window is just that and help is empty. On to the main panel. Under important, there's four points here and we need to pay very close attention to them. The first one is run this mod before MSFS 2020. That's right, make sure you run the mod before starting the simulator. If you use rolling cache, please clear it before. We're gonna go ahead and clear ours whether we use it or not. And then if you use a proxy to access Google, make sure you set that up as well. And then finally, disable any firewall or antivirus if you have trouble. Normally I do the same thing. I leave it enabled, I have a problem, then I look into disabling it or adding a rule for this particular program. On the proxy settings tab, if you need proxy to access Google, put it in, test the proxy, make sure it works, and then go on. If not, like me, I don't use a proxy, so I leave it blank. Under map server, there's mt.google and khm.google. What I recommend is pulling up a command prompt and pinging each one of those, or just using the mt.google, and if you have a problem, switch to the other. You can ping them though, and then choose the one that gives you the fastest result. In my case, it's mt.google.com. Finally, there's the troubleshooting tab. Now this one has an FAQ you can click to, but it is like a browser inside of this application and it like locks you into it. So if you go there, you can't get back out without exiting the application and restarting it, which we'll do now so I can show you how to launch this application going forward. You'll find it in your start menu. What I've done is actually pinned it to my start menu and I'll show you that now. So if you go to start, you'll see it's there and you recently added. And of course I've pinned it. So as soon as I click it, boom, it pops up. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn this thing on, get into the simulator and see how it looks. Well, to do that, all we have to do is slide the little slide for inject Google Maps. So if you slide that slide, then it'll start the process of connecting to the servers. We'll wait for a moment, there we go. And as soon as we get the check boxes next to the server check, we can go ahead and launch the simulator. We'll just wait for that now. And as soon as we get those check boxes, there we go. We'll verify that we have at least one image loaded, which we do, and we'll launch the simulator. And while we're waiting on the simulator to launch, let's go over a couple of key points. Number one, the map enhancement application or this mod must remain running while the simulator is running. That's because the mod is what pulls in the Google map images and replaces the Bing images that we get by default. Speaking of those map images, if you're coming from the FSX or P3D world, you can think of them as ground textures only, or if you're coming from X-Plane 11, perhaps ortho textures only. And what I mean by that is that we're not pulling in any buildings, fauna, autogen, uh, Google Maps buildings, anything like that. It's just the aerial imagery that we get from satellite or airplane. So through the power of video editing, we have supercomputer fast loaded into the simulator and now we're ready to go, right? No, we've got one more change we need to do and you need to do this change anytime you change from Bing to Google Maps or vice versa. So if you're changing a map provider, make sure you go into options, general options, data. And then once we're in data, we're gonna scroll all the way to the bottom and we're gonna look at our local cache or what Microsoft calls the rolling cache file and we're gonna delete that rolling cache file. Now you need to delete this file whether you use a rolling cache or like me, you don't use a rolling cache. Make sure you delete the file. So go down there, click the delete button. It's gonna ask you if you want to do this, say okay. Let it do its thing. What happens if you don't delete the cache? Well, this is what happens. This was my first time out and you get Google and Bing competing. So it's flashing tiles abound. If that's your thing, don't delete the cache. <laughs> All right, then once we've deleted the cache, we're gonna go on up and ensure that our three online pieces are on. And that's online functionality, Bing data world graphics and photogrammetry. Make sure those three are all on. Once they are, go down to the bottom, click apply and save. And then you can go back to the map and you're ready to fly. In our instance, today, we're gonna check out Kilo Echo Kilo Yankee 
which is Bessemer, a small town outside of Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And, well, let's see Google Maps here. We're already kind of seeing a bit of that as we zoom in. Here it comes. And we're seeing a bit of that there. We'll see more when we hit the ready to fly screen. There is a caveat. And of course, there's always a catch, but it's the same catch that we have with Bing Maps, just a bit more pronounced with Google. And that is with the photogrammetric cities, you have hard breaks between those photogrammetric areas and the autogen areas. So now we're ready to fly into the aircraft. Let's pop out to the drone camera and go on up. I'm already seeing these ground textures. Look at the left and the right of the runway there. That's grass. That looks very detailed compared to what we have in Bing. That concrete taxiway to the left is a little over saturated, but we're looking at the ground textures now, not the concrete. And let's pan to the right here. We're seeing some grassy areas. Yeah, that, that color is much better than what we get with Bing. And because so much of the color in 2020 is derived from those ground textures, even the atmospheric color, this really brings the simulator to life. Um, here's another example from Bessemer. And I'm just loving the colors and the way this pops. Very realistic. Well done. Well done. That, that's my review here. We've got a few more uh, examples. You've already seen the side-by-sides at the beginning of the video here. One quick tip for you, you can always check to ensure you're bringing in the latest graphics or, or map images, if you will, by just popping onto the application, alt tabbing into that application, and it'll show you the number of images that it's received and you'll see those images updating you see them flashing there on my screen because it's pulling in those latest map image files honestly in the areas where i don't have these cities the google imagery is so much better i think this application is a keeper my review on it anyway is that it's a good one if you like it install it check it out it's great Here's the thing, if you don't and you want to switch back to Bing, just flip that slider to the left uh, or go into programs and features and uninstall it. Make sure you flip the slider to the left before you do the uninstall and then just delete your rolling cache again like we showed in the video earlier and you're set. At this point, the application will have either been disabled or uninstalled and you know you can continue on with Bing. In my case, I think I'm going to keep it installed and keep it activated. I'm really, really happy with how it's turned out. I hope that this video has helped sway you one way or the other. If you were thinking about getting the app or if you had questions on how the install process worked or how the app worked, hopefully this video has helped you out. If it has, or if you like the video in general, give us a big thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more future videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.